Well, one thing that he pointed out is that some people think that it might be uh, literature and others say it's pure science. And that is a group called the Anunnaki. And that even this person working for the DIA knew about the relationship of Mars to the Earth and the fact that the Anunnaki had been on Mars as a precursor to coming to Earth and ending up in conflict with the greys and the blondes. And it was fascinating because it meant to me that the United States government inside of highly classified intelligence agencies that are responsible for investigating extraterrestrial biological entities not only on the Earth, but on the Moon and throughout the solar system, they have a history that they consider to be fact. But if you went into Oxford or Harvard or other universities, you would not have a matchup on what our own government's history is. And it is extremely dramatic. It is that the Anunnaki came from another star system apparently escaping some kind of war, ends up on Mars, ends up in war on Mars, might explain the hydrogen bomb uh, evidence that may be on Mars. They come to Earth. They end up with a triangle of reptiles, of the greys and themselves, and then they fight again. And he told me, he said, what we've come to learn the greys can make blonde bodies and reptile bodies and project themselves into the blondes of the reptiles. The reptiles can make blondes and gray bodies and project themselves into the blonde and the gray bodies. The blondes can make the reptilian bodies and the gray bodies and project themselves into it. And he said, Linda, what I've just said to you is the key to the history of this planet. Right. That the competing extraterrestrials can camouflage as each other's enemies. Right. And that relates to what we were talking about earlier, the installation where I said that um, there are cloaking me mechanisms to make certain incidents look like it's coming from humanity that's itself. And even the uh, some very advanced Uh, species, they haven't had a clue about that. They were looking at it and they were also presuming that it's maybe coming from humanity itself. While in fact there are evidences that what you described is, is a possibility and in, at a, in fact, yes. Which means almost everything in the history of the Earth was an illusion, a competing illusion on behalf of intelligences who are able to even deceive their enemy and what they're after is control of our planet. Yeah, I mean, so we have a lot of um, agendas going on. And what I would say is very true is that we have a kind of rare situation on this planet as we have a high variety of species animal species, uh, botanical species, but also the water, human water species. Yeah. And we also have different strains, so to speak, of humanity itself. Reinforcing this planet has been used as a, lo a laboratory by these multiple species, which would explain why the density of different life forms on Earth is supposed to be hugely greater than the normal planet that may have two or three. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest that we have like this kind of absolute answer. So I, I would say that some of the species we're talking about indeed think uh, that Earth is kind of a playground for whatever they, you know, have in mind. But uh, I would also say that there are different other species, very benevolent, that think that Earth is just a wonderful place. It's a, it's something where, you know, life flourishes and so on. But what, what I wanted to say about the, the rare moment or the rare situation that we have uh, considering Earth is that there are so many different influences 
acting and operating on this planet that there is a high uh, diversity. And diversity, again, is something that a species allows in order to make experiences. And experiences um, is fundamentally the main force of the universe in order to, to grow. So that is something why this planet Earth is chaotic, yet has a very high potency in order to evolve. 